Akuna Matata, my friend. Happy birthday to you and also happy birthday to me. This video is going to be a little bit long, but I just want to share with you what I have learned by being Kolobasi Haosu, or what Kolobasi Haosu teach me, right? That the first thing is that there is only one Kolobasi Haosu, so there is no two. That life is simple and beautiful no matter what is the circumstance. That tomorrow is no promise. That I sh cherish and treasure my past in order to enjoy tomorrow yeah, or today. That the world does not owe me a thing. If I don't try, I will fail. And failure guarantees success for tomorrow. I believe in myself. I have unshakable faith that everything just going to be all right at the end. That tomorrow does not exist. And if tomorrow comes in a box, when I open it, I find today. The struggle is not permanent. I don't think new day, same chapter, same story. Absolutely not. I make new decisions every morning based on my true self. Is to live as Buddha did, as Jesus did, as Muhammad did as did every sin we have at the lives. Yet, as with most of those sins, people do not understand me. When I try to explain my sense of peace, my joy in life, my inner ecstasy, they listen to me or listen to my word, but not hear them. They would try to repeat my word, but not my action. And that's how life goes, right? And each new day is a chance to build upon what was, a chance to press forward to the best that could be. Do you know how actually chance happen? <laughs> Two things. One is hope for tomorrow and compassion for today. Yes, we fall. Yes, we fell. But each moment I live is connected by the belief that the action I take will next day, next week, next year, add up to something more, something greater, something bigger than myself. And what comes next? Well, the possibilities are infinite. You know, we think slow and we speak first. We speak first and think later. Listen, the process should be this. First, learn the meaning of what you would say. And if the meaning speak of truth, then speak it. If not, don't speak. If anyone tell you that certain person speak ill of you, do not defend yourself. It is easy to say to people who you are, what are your belief, what you stand for, but the next second people forget it. So don't explain your philosophy, leave it, embody it. As people are governed by a belief that seeing is believing. Right? First, say to yourself what you will be, and then do what you have to do to be that person. But be humble. When you make a mistake, hands up and accept the responsibility and learn from it and move on. You know, I laugh at those who think that they can damage me or they can harm me. They do not know who I am. They do not know what I think. They cannot even touch the thing which are really mine, which I live for. The greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. Attach yourself to what is spiritually superior, regardless of what other people think or do. Hold to your true aspiration no matter what is going around you. Events do not just happen, they are by appointment, my friend. Do not seek to have events happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do happen, and all will be well with you. Say to yourself, yeah, I used to be angry every day, then every other day, now only every third or fourth day. And when you reach 30 days, offer yourself a gift. <laughs> Small-minded people blame others, and average people blame themselves. The wise see all blame as a foolishness. It is our attitude to our event, not event themselves, which we can control. Nothing by its own nature is calamitous. I mean, even death, we don't know about death. Yes, it's terrible, but it's only when we fear it. On the occasion of every accident that befalls you, remember to turn to yourself and inquire, 
what power you have for to turn it to your use. When you are offended at any man's faults, turn to yourself and study your own failing. Then you will forget your anger. You know, the trials you encounter will introduce you to your strengths. So remain steadfast and one day you will build something that endures something worth of your potential and it's called resilience. The secret to happiness is simple, my friend. <laughs> what secret? I'm telling you there's no secret to happy life. But I believe that happy life is a life which is for the service of other people. My ideal life is one that is in harmony with nature, on which we're all part of it, and an attitude of calm and difference toward any external event. So some things are within our control and some are not. And much of our unhappiness is caused by the thinking that we can control things that in fact we cannot. It is not thing that upset us, but how we think about things. Stuff happen. We make judgment about what has happened. If we judge that something really bad has happened, then we might get upset, sad, or angry, depending on what is that. If we judge that something bad is likely to happen, then we may get scared and fearful. All these emotions are product of the judgment that we make. Things in themselves are value neutral, or what might seem terrible to one person might be indifferent to somebody else, and or other people even welcome it. It is the judgment we make that introduce the value into the picture, and it's those value judgments that generate our emotional response. Things happen, none of which are inherently good or bad. It is within our power to decide how we value them. We have almost no control over anything, yet at the same time, we have potentially complete control over our happiness. Life can be hard at some time. Take stock at the end of each day, noting when we become irritated by something unimportant or act angrily in response to someone who perhaps did not deserve it, and so and so. By noting your mistake, you will do better next day. Trust me. No one chooses to be unhappy, stressed, angry, miserable, and yet these are in fact all the product of our judgment, the one thing within our control. Let us remind ourselves of our relative importance. The world does not revolve around us. Our lives are but moments when placed within this cosmic perspective. Given this, why should we expect the universe to deliver whatever that is we may happen to want? On contrary, it would be absurd to expect it to conform to our own will. If you expect the universe to deliver what you want, you are going to be disappointed, my friend. But if you embrace whatever the universe gives you, then life will be a whole lot better, my friend. My friend, you come to say this, yeah? If you think you are beaten, you are certainly beaten. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but you think you can, you are almost certain you won't. If you think you will lose your loss, for out of the world we find that success begins with your will. It is all in a state of your mind. If you think you are outclassed, you are almost. You have got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life battle don't always go to the stronger or the faster, but sooner or later, the person who wins it is the person who thinks they can. Be patient. Patient is a capacity to accept or to tolerate delay, problems, or suffering without becoming annoying or anxious. Never make your most important decision when you are in your worst mood. Wait. Be patient, the storm will pass, the spring will come, the summer will be there. So my friend, 
our real blessing often appear to us in the shape of a pain, losses, suffering, disappointment, and so and so. But let us have patience, and we soon shall see them in the proper figure. You never know what it is waiting you in the corner. So, my friend, Akuna Matata, may God bless and protect you. Happy birthday. I hope you find this message useful and important. Share it and give me a thumbs up. Thank you. And God bless you. <laughs>